Dear viewers, welcome back. You're still watching Nile Cruise and from Manuel Roda and from a very special place here in Manuel Roda, the Nile Meter and uh, the Ministerly Palace, a wonderful place on the Nile banks, of course. We have with us today a very uh, special guest, Mohammed. Yes, uh, Rana, it's uh, Dr. Uh, Yahya Abdel Adir, uh, uh, tourism uh, counselor. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yahya, for uh, joining a, a Nile cruise um, here on Nile TV International. And, sir, uh, to fully discover the ancient wonders of Egypt, a cruise on the uh, Nile River, just like our program is called Rana Nile Cruise, <laughs> is truly an unforgettable experience. Uh, um, tell us about that. Uh, experience in the view of a tourism expert as yourself. Really, the, the highlight of Egyptian uh, of, of Egyptian tour to Egypt, you know, like is uh, cruising the Nile, you know, all the way from Rosetta, uh, you know, like down to Cairo, Memphis, you know, like uh, up to Luxor, which is ancient Thebes, and reach, reaching until Aswan. And uh, since uh, uh, Greek Roman time, you know, Queen Cleopatra, the famous queen of Egypt, when a Caesar. I was visiting Egypt, she was escorting them on this tour, you know, like to visit Thebes and, you know, like uh, uh, enjoy, you know, like the display of wealth and richness and history and heritage of Egypt. So that was, you know, like a very way for her to attract, you know, like, uh, uh, I mean, like world leaders, you know, like that was reading the uh, Roman Empire by the time and, and the, the cruising the Nile was the highlight, you know, like of the relationships between Egypt, you know, like and the Roman Empire. Beautiful. Dr. Yahya, how is the Nile related with Egyptians' um, uh, history uh, and everyday life? Well, uh, actually, you know, like uh, the Nile is the lifeline for the Egyptians. I mean, there was no Nile, there was no Egyptian civilization, and Egyptian civilization is the oldest and mightiest civilization. Nearly, I mean, it's no exaggeration that everybody says everything started in Egypt, you know. When I started in England, America, I see signs all the way. For example, for the winery, they say the distillation, distillery was started in Egypt. I go to a bowling alley and they say bowling, you know, like started in ancient Egypt. Chess, chemistry, astronomy, engineering, you know, architecture. I mean, look, we have uh, antiquities that has been there for 7,000 years and still, you know, like in excellent shape compared to the current contemporary architecture we have. So uh, if you look at North Africa, you know, like there's no strong civilization as compared to the Egyptian one because there's no... Uh, a gradual and current source of water that was enabling to have agriculture, which was the wealth and energy by the time. Right, uh, Dr. Yahya, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Africa, uh, the um, uh, river, the Nile River, uh, flows to the north into the Mediterranean Sea. The prevailing winds along the Nile are to the south, so therefore, uh, uh, for uh, the, the Nile has been in a, a great route with boats drifting north and raising their sails for the return trip uh, upriver. Uh, and uh, it is a gate uh, uh, for, uh, for Africa. I mean, the Nile, that's uh, basin countries that there are many also African uh, countries that um, uh, thrive on the Nile. And maybe the, uh, their civilizations wouldn't have existed if not for the Nile, right? Exactly. There are, the, the, the Nile basin is made of nine countries, you know, like Bronde, Rwanda, Egypt, Kenya, Ethiopia. Sudan, you know, if you, I mean, like it's a multitude, and the Nile is overlooking another 11 countries at least. So it's one of the mightiest river, and it is considered to be a scarce, rare river because most rivers flow north to south. It, it flows from south to north. This is one point. Yeah. Another, you know, like the uh, uh, well, when Herodotus says, you know, like Egypt is the gift of the Nile, some people say, no, 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 we Egyptian created Egypt, but really, you know, like without, you know, like the mud and the silt you know, like an alluvium of the Nile that made uh, Egyptian Delta very fertile. And that's why it was very attractive for many colonies, you know, like for uh, colonization to come to Egypt. Because, for example, the Greeks and the Romans, why they were attracted to Egypt, they were attracted to the Delta. Because Egypt was a very fertile valley all the way, and we had uh, abundance of agriculture and corn. And that was, you know, like the power center by the time. So, and, and, I, and, and as you all know that, uh, the Roman Empire was using Egypt as its bread basket to, you know, like feed, you know, like the rest of the empire. So the, the, the Nile is, is the, the lifeline for Egypt and for the other countries as well. But the ancient Egyptians, they were genius and they were able, you know, like to administer and tame the river and make it, you know, like work for them. They started agriculture, starting having, you know, like grain, 
barley, uh, uh, wheat, and then they started the making granaries to keep it as it was like lean years and fat years. So, and they were like the power center, the energy center for the world. When there's famine in Southern Africa, they get corn from Egypt. When it's in, uh, we know the story of Prophet Joseph and his brother, he was coming for the corn. And even like the, the, the colonialism, you know, like from Greco-Roman time, they were coming for the corn too. So Egypt was creating balance in the region because it has abundance of wheat and corn and cattle that was feeding the whole region at times of shortage and famine. Right, Dr. Yahya. Uh, Dr. Yahya, of course, um, I'd like to ask you a very um, important question when we're uh, here in this very important place. Uh, what are some of the landmarks on the Nile uh, that are included uh, on the tourist programs and that have to be um, um, seen by the tourists when they come over uh, to our country or to, 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 to watch and see the Nile? I River. see. Actually, you know, like in the 18th century, you know, like when it was so freezing in Europe, so you know, like the rich and famous would afford, you know, taking a cruise, you know, like from the, they come by steamers, reach Alexandria and through the Rosetta. Uh, you know, artery, they would come all the way and spend in Luxon as one like three or four months and then it warms up in Europe again. So tourism to Egypt, as we know, we have heritage hotels like Luxor and the other one that was in the episodes in Grand Hotel, you know. So these were built for the rich and famous like the Cecil Hotel, you know, like Alexandria and the Savoy and Shepherd in Cairo. Uh, these are historical hotels built to accommodate the rich and famous and then later the cruises start shortening the from three months to one month. I personally, when I was a student, I worked for the uh, international cruises, and it was one week. Now, uh, all the way from Naga Hammadi up to Aswan, now this has been shorter because people don't have enough time to spend 10 days, so now it's four nights, five days. And this is the highlight, you know, I worked for the tourism department in New York and California, and when I was sending any groups or any, you know, like celebrities, uh, you know, like, so they were recommending to them, you know, if you don't cruise the Nile, Really, you haven't seen Egypt because it's so authentic. You see the Karnak Temple, you know, like on the eastern banks of the river. And then you go to the Valley of the Kings and the Queens. You see the tombs of King Tut, Ramos II, and you know, like all the queens. So uh, really, way, the best way, genuine way to check on Egyptian heritage and culture is through, you know, like a cruise, you know, like uh, itinerary all the way. Well, better if you start from Cairo. Right. Uh, Dr. Yahya, uh, we want to talk about the Nilometer. The Nilometer is a structure for measuring the Nile River's clarity and, of course, all importantly, the water levels during the annual flood season. What is the historic value um, uh, of the Nilometer in your view? Well, I checked, you know, like with some references and, you know, like this Nilometer that, you know, like we are, you know, like uh, in the nearby in the vicinity of it now, you know, in Mastelli Palace which is a historical site. This has been developed, you know, like since the times of the pharaohs, you know. So this is like about three or four thousand years ago. And these people, they were very meticulous and they wanted to do like a fair taxation for everyone. So according to the level of the water, so they go to the farmers and tell them, you know, like how much according to the tract of land they are farming, they are going to charge them. And this, you know, like uh, practice uh, went on throughout the times of the greek roman then the Arabs, the same thing, you know, like followed the same procedure and now uh, it's not calculated anymore because since Muhammad Ali days dynasty we moved from uh, perennial irrigation you know like which was you know, like from basin irrigation which was the flood comes and floods everything from August to November and then we can uh, grow the land for two or three times a year it becomes perennial so after the uh, uh, Aswan uh, yeah. Reservoir and the high dam we can grow the land year round so now, you know, like its value has been a little bit limited, you know. Right. So it's, it's a historic value more than anything else. But it had an important role in the, exactly, in the history and civilization. Exactly, because it was, you know, like the, the, the country, of, you know, like they needed taxation for the public, you know, like projects. And it was a fair way, you know, like they know what, what is the level of the water and according to which they know how is going to be the output of the crops and according to which they tax them. And we have seen, you know, like... Uh, uh, up to now, we still have some of the antiquities in fair shape, you know, which shows, you know, how solid was the system by the time. Right. Dr. Yahya, um, you mentioned that you used to work in New York, uh, of course, in the field of tourism. Yes. Um, what is the difference in advertising for your touristic sites here in Egypt and back in New York? 
Well, actually, that was the, like the Ministry of Tourism, Egyptian Tourism Authority, you know, like it's a government office, and there's an association called FGTO, Foreign Government Tourist Offices, both in the East Coast and West Coast. And we have to attend, you know, like international conferences like the ASTA. We have, for example, the New York office was supervising in North America, Central America, Latin America, the whole of continent. So, but, but the New York office was supervising 17 states in the East Coast. So I have to visit, you know, like uh, all of them when there's like uh, road shows, uh, visit the museum, the universities, the media, the festivals. And I was working like, for example, with the um, uh, Discovery Channel, with the uh, National Geographic, with the Archaeology Magazine. It was a very rich time. And there was like very famous writers and novelists who would like to travel to Egypt and actors. So they will contact me and I make arrangements with them to come and meet, you know, like writers and painters and the intelligence here in Egypt. So that was one of the, of, of like the uh, contact, direct to contact. But other than that, we used to have campaigns, you know, in the New York Times, Los Angeles Times, and used to have radio campaigns, TV campaigns, and road shows. So really, I mean, like, uh, but unfortunately, this, this office which went, with were act, in action for 75 years is not existing anymore. And, why? Why and, is it? Well, it's like a decision by one of the ministers of tourism, and this office has been in action since 1950. You know, like even before the Egyptian Revolution, and we were supervising, you know, like 30 countries, you know, like in North and Central and South America, and these 30 countries they produce 35 percent of world wealth. So imagine that we don't have one office to represent Egypt over there. So it, uh, we used to have four offices in Montreal, and in Chicago, and Los Angeles, and in New York, and even in Houston. So we don't have one office to, to represent us in, like, in, the, uh, in the most advanced, you know, like country and world, you know, like nations in the world. So we look forward that they hear us and they uh, reopen the office again. Hopefully. Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Yahya, uh, the in the, how has industrialization and, um, and in turn pollution um, uh, uh, affected the, uh, the waters uh, of the Nile and what are we doing to keep it uh, as clean as it has had been for thousands of years? Well, you know, like the, uh, the population of Egypt, you know, like in like maybe in for time, like the maximum there was like about four to five million people and that was the largest, the biggest nation by the time. Now, you know, like in, in this basin, at least like the nine countries who have over 300, you know, like who, you know, like depend on, on one river for their livelihood. And remember when there was like sometimes some, some problems in Rwanda, you know, like we were affected here. So really the overpopulation is affecting because this is the only, you know, like artery and lifeline for the countries. And there is over industrialization. But governments now, nearly every government has a department of environment and try to safeguard the river, you know, like and protect the environment for a variety of reasons. There is wildlife, there is fisheries, you know, like, and even the plantations. And, you know, like, uh, as you said, the over industrialization really created, you know, like, using items like uh, pesticides and fertilizers. And this is, you know, like, uh, detrimental sometimes to the quality of the water. So uh, every country, you know, like, is trying to make, you know, like, the uh, river water, you know, like, potable, like, like drinkable and healthy. And uh, the Egyptian government is working hard to safeguard this, this, uh, this aspect. Um, uh, Dr. Um, Yahya, back again to, uh, our, to Egypt and Egyptian citizens. How do the Egyptian citizens um, uh, uh, use the Nile uh, banks and the Nile River? And what do they gain from it? And how do they see it as a touristic destination? Well, uh, if we talk about Pharaonic time, the, uh, the, the, the Nile was like, like sacred, you know. It was like the god, Kari, and it was a source of life. So everyone, even if you go to like the Book of the Dead, they say, you know, like, I never polluted the river. That was like the greatest sin, you know, like, uh, if he touches the river in the wrong way. And you know that it is the lifeline, so it was worshipped, they make sacrifices to it. And you know, this is the source of life. And at the same time, they had a belief that this river, you know, like, springs from heaven. You know, like not from air, so it was something sacred, really. Uh, so they were worshiping it and keeping it, you know, like uh, in, in, in a safe way, and they were celebrating around it. For example, in Easter time, I mean, like uh, what we have, like Shaminisim now, this is Pharaonic, like since like 4,005 years ago. So it was for them, the, 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 uh, the Nile represented eternity, fertility, and regeneration of the earth, because 
Egypt, as they noticed that the, the rest of North Africa is barren, you know. There is no life, but the life, the life came to Egypt, you know, and the fertility and richness through the Nile. So they were taking very good care of it and, and, and knew that if there was no, like, this river, if not flooding year-round, you know, they are going to be in trouble. That's why they used this Nilometer and the Amnemhat was, was in the 13th dynasty. In Fayum, he made projects and he made oases, you know, like to control the river. They made even a canal between the Nile and the Red Sea. So they were working hard in irrigation to, you know, like uh, control, you look, and then monitor the river and uh, make use, you know, like of it, you know, like as a lifeline for the, the whole nation. Dr. Yahir Abdel Eder, a touristic uh, expert, uh, we thank you so much for joining us in today's episode of Nile Cruise. Of course, you enriched our episode with the valuable information, and we thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Thank you, Amr. Dr. Yahya. Thank you. And uh, please, uh, dear viewers, do stay with us. Rana and I will be back to continue our program from the banks of the River Nile here in Manila Road.